Oh, right. Well, I was a carer, yeah. So, yeah, for a while. Yeah. Um, I did exactly what he did. Mm -hmm. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I'm currently on day release. Um, <laughs> I didn't do exactly what she did. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's, there is a person out of me now. I didn't want to. <laughs> um, yeah, I, you know, I didn't want to shy away from, from those from those caring elements, like, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that, that he relieved himself, uh, well, I, I have a client that relieved himself for two weeks um, every single morning, mm. um, and right down to the, to the putting the suppository um, in, uh, that was exactly what I did on yeah. a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, there can be very graphic elements. There um, is, but we did, we absolutely didn't want to shy away from that. We want to show every single element of a you know of a, of a, mm -hmm. of a carer's day. Absolutely, yeah. you know, well, m most kind of films are kind of gloss over it and just go, oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's like it's, it's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, we just absolutely didn't want to shy away, and that's something that was in the very first original script. Wonderful. The, the day to day stuff, yeah. yeah. And so, what prompted taking that day to day ritual, that day to day procedure, and weaving it into a fictional narrative as you've done? Um, I think the story needs to be told. I, th um, I think, like, behind it, you need to see what a carer does. Mm -hmm. um, I know we, we, we played at Pride Fest. And actually, there were so many carers in the audience that right. came up to us afterwards and said, Thank you. Um, for, for telling our story, that's exactly what we, we do. Uh, not, <laughs> not, to an extent. Not, not murder, but, uh, well, um, yeah, it was... <laughs> Moving swiftly along. <laughs> so, you, you have a very strong primary cast, you have almost one central location for the whole film. How do you go about creating enough continued intrigue and holding the audience's attention within such a confined space? Well, I, I, I mean, for myself personally, I, I think what you have to do is concentrate on the drama, on the story, mm -hmm. you know, and there's, there's characters there that, um, when, when I read the script originally as a short, we, I felt that as a short, we were going we to lose out by doing it, and I said before we need to develop feature script because it needs to breathe all the beats are there mm -hmm. we just need to make it breathe and i think that's that's what you you have to let them do and you know sean is one of those directors who allows the actors to, to play within that scene as well you know it's not just kind of uh, do the dialogue move on and hit your mark it's sit mm -hmm. with it see where it takes you and you're allowed to kind of see where that goes and and you know again kyle our dp uh, he's got a fantastic cinematic eye and he he just kind of approached each scene um, with with a real visual understanding of cinema, and I and I think that for me in a small space like that, you know, you do get this cinematic feel from it, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's something that I think if we had went straight down the traditional horror route, it could have went badly wrong. Yeah, you know? and uh, there were times which it did at one point. I mean, I think we had the the um, Kevin the. the case manager he came in and we we had him making illegal dvds about the camera right and stuff. I mean, it was really really shit yeah um, yeah. Careful. yeah thrill seekers mm. and you know you, I, I, mean, I guess i don't know where the whole rock star thing came from really it was just i think it was more okay so these guys live on the edge they mm -hmm. you know they're, they're at sort of camp so what would be worse for them is to find themselves in, in a situation like john um, I, I mean, a lot of the guy, a, a guy that I looked after, for instance, was a um, he was a racing car driver. Yeah. Uh, um, so to find yourself in that situation, where one day the, 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 your racing car is hundred miles an hour around a track, mm -hmm. to the point where you're in rehabilitation for a year, uh, in traction for a year, mm -hmm. and then to find yourself being looked after by someone, you know, having you know, having your ass wiped and stuff, of course. which is what stuff that they got thrown at. Well, they, they didn't throw anything at Well, they actually, they did. Um, <laughs> but, but still, um, it's, 
And, and that kind of intrigued me, and actually the, the relationship between mm -hmm. the, the carer and, because they're forced into a situation that n neither of them want to be in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Evie came over from, from a different country trying to get away from her past, found herself having to care, um, found herself in that job, and John having to have the care. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was that, that was what really, really interested me in writing a script about this. Excellent. Because Reading's gonna be the death of me. I swear to God. This is nasty. Any gaps if there's one or two seats in between you and your neighbour, if you could just scooch up, that'd be awesome, just so nobody's interrupting the film when we got it rolling. Cheers. <laughs> oh, wow. Cheers. First of all, fill out one of these data capture forms. We have them at the uh, on the uh, Grim store in the uh, hub space, so pick one of these up, fill it out. A couple of questions on there. You might win a pass to next year's festival. Uh, Kem Foray will be with us on Sunday evening, uh, live from Los Angeles. So if you have any questions you'd like to ask Kem Foray, um, famous for, for Dawn of the Dead and various other horror movies, you can tweet us at hashtag Ask Foray. If you've got any burning questions you'd like to ask him, please do drop us a, a tweet. Uh, if you want to do some scary selfies against the media wall, you could be up for winning uh, the full box set of Hannibal, the TV series. That's a prize we've got going. So if you go and take yourself a selfie on the on the uh, media wall and stick it on Twitter, uh, you might be you could you could win that. Hey guys, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the score for Beyond the Gates, same guy did my film. Oh, okay. here we go. Uh, yeah, I, I love it. Uh, so <laughs> I think you guys are going to have a blast during this. Hopefully you're ready to see some pretty crazy shit. 
And uh, feel free to like clap or make audible reactions to anything. The noisier you guys are, the better, for sure. Yes. So yeah, uh, enjoy. Thank you, Matt. And Matt will be with us after the film for the Q&A. Enjoy. I don't know, there's something I always liked about like taking the fucked up like redneck hillbilly characters that are the villains and like turning them into the heroes. So like that was another thing that I always wanted to like, I wanted to have your totally average regular people team up with like the satanic hillbillies you know, like halfway through the movie. Brilliant, because what I got from this, and hopefully a lot of you got from it as well, is that the third act is the strongest. You know, and, and that's where a lot of genre films fall apart. So it's really good to see you going oh, through thanks, yeah. some of the, you know, the, the sort of standard setup tropes and then just completely flipping it around. And was this something you were going for as well? Yeah, that was totally another thing I was going for. Like, I kind of wanted to start it off like your standard, like, 80s slasher, which is like, kind of like the first act is like pretty slow paced, just like all characters, no really kills or anything like that and then just have it get a little bit more fucked up as it goes on and then just kind of like crazier and crazier and crazier until like the final scene. Awesome, awesome. And the idea of the sort of advancing, um, otherworldly, slightly naked. Uh, <laughs> very, very naked. Yeah, um, sort of a Toby Hooper's life, life Force by way yeah, of- Yeah, life, life Force, huge inspiration. I love that film. Excellent, excellent. And, so how do you convince an actress to do this, to say, right? Uh, I guess you just get really lucky in my case. Like, I found this girl, Dal, on uh, like a modeling site, and it was just like, hmm, shoots nudity? Yes, okay, uh, <laughs> this film's gonna require a lot of nudity, you okay with that? And like, she was actually totally cool with it. Like, even more cool than like the crew expected, I guess, because they were all like, all right, you should, you know, you're not filming right now, you should go back in the house, and she's like, I don't give a fuck, I'm, that's fine, you've seen me naked before, so like, I'll just, let me just stand around here, it's cool. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, so the, yeah. the final scene. So the prosthetics was crazy, because that was like one of the first things we worked on on the film, and uh, interesting fact is the prosthetic in the final shot is like a one-to-one -one accurate mold of the actress's, you know, actual area. So she was like pretty freaked out when she saw that scene for the first time, because she's like, uh, that's me on screen and things are coming out of me. Uh, the other day I, I had sent her a link to the film and she was like, I don't think my boyfriend likes me anymore after seeing this. <laughs> oh man, I, I'm so obviously heavily practical special effects. Yeah, yeah definitely. So how, who were you working with on this? And... Uh, so it was a girl from St. Louis, uh, this girl Chase Bradley. She was actually one of the first people I talked to about it too, and I was like, so we want to do all these, blah, 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 these things, and she was like, yeah, I can totally do that. And I don't know, I was like, are we going to be able to do this final scene? And she was like, yeah, no problem. And then, yeah, it worked out. The interesting fact too is we actually had two molds of the final kind of crotch shot. One had like the full legs, and one was just like a close-up, and that shot ended up getting delayed due to weather and some other factors. So we shot that about like three or four months after the rest of the film. And the leg prosthetic had completely degraded and it looked like zombie legs by that point. And it was like, no, this doesn't look right. So I was like, well, originally I wasn't planning on going that close up on the final shot, but I was like, all right, let's do this. It's just full on vagina shot, let's, let's do it. 